So this topic today, giving and receiving, being a cause and not an effect, it's very important during these times because we're dealing with a time when there's a lot of influences in this world, people trying to influence us, the consciousness of the world coming down on us and just all these currents of fear and anxiety and all these things. And this reading in the Bhagavad Gita teaches us how to be a cause rather than an effect. And it comes from giving. And it's not just what we give, but it comes from an inner consciousness. And the saintliness comes from this contact with God. Now, there's a few parts of this. One, very important, is to put away all desires and to be in God. When we still have desires, we're still taking or wanting to take and grab for ourselves. I want this. I like that. And likes and dislikes, these uh, ties and bindings of the heart that we're trying to pull things towards me, me, me. This starts to take us away from the consciousness of God. When we are in God, then naturally everything is good. And so we have to learn to offer up our desires to God and to give them up in meditation and not suppress them because too many yogis suppress their desires and it just bottles them up and then they burst out in anger or different wrong attitudes. And so this is why meditation, attunement to the guru, all these things we talk about all the time. Now, if you look at the saints and the masters and you look at their lives, and you look at what it is that is so compelling about them. It's not what they take for themselves. It's not what they receive from God. Yes, they have experiences, some of them. But honestly, Swami Kriyanandaji, he said he rarely had these experiences where even beginners on the path talk about these huge, grandiose visions and experiences. And the great ones rarely talk about such things. But Swamiji acknowledged that he doesn't have many of those things, very few of them, but he was a great saint and he had a much higher consciousness than I think people who have all these different things happening in their, in their spiritual life. But what about the saints and masters that is so compelling and notable is how much they give. That's what we think of them. People, Swami Kriyananda had a thousand or more people in this world who acknowledged that he was their best friend because he gave to them and he didn't take from them. He only thought of giving. And so this is our part. And we ask, people ask sometimes, what do I have to give? You know, we, we talk about being an instrument for the divine and an instrument for God. And we have a, a responsibility, a duty, but it's also a great blessing to do this. And Someone asked Swamiji once, and this is very important. They asked him, I keep praying to be made worthy to spread God's message. And I think we all want to spread light and joy and harmony during this time to be a cause rather than an effect. Swamiji's answer was very interesting and really notable. His answer to someone saying, I keep praying to be made worthy and good enough to spread God's message, to be an instrument. Swamiji said, you'll never be worthy. Isn't that interesting? Now he said more than that. <laughs> if you stopped there, then we'd be in big trouble. But what he said was, because it isn't for man to be worthy. It's God who can do it. We can't ever do well. What we need to do is get ourselves out of the picture and let him th flow through us. He can do it. We can't. This was at a Kriya initiation he gave. And he said the same thing. He, this is what he said also. He said, and the same thing is true with your practice of Kriya Yoga. Just remember that, for those of you who are Kriya Bands. And then he went on. He said, anything can be done by him. Ask the masters to do it through you have the total confidence that they can, you'll find that success is going to come to you on the spiritual path and in Kriya much more quickly. 
very early when I was with Swami Kriyanandaji, I was on his staff, and I was still very young. I didn't know how to relate to someone that had that greatness. And this was in America where we had no training on how to honor and revere a teacher. So we made a lot of mistakes, and they were innocent mistakes out of sincerity. But I was on his staff, and it was my birthday. And I just, I, somehow I just wanted some, something from him. And so, yeah, I was trying to take rather than give, but it showed his generous spirit. I said, Swamiji, because he never would give advice, or he rarely would give advice. People think being around him, he was always guiding you and advising you. Master didn't do that either. Swamiji said that when the disciples were with Master, the close disciples, he was almost always in silence very inward and quiet, and would say very little. And he wouldn't tell people, oh, you should do this, you should do that. But I somehow just, my heart wanted that from him. So I asked Swamiji, Swamiji, I would really deeply appreciate a birthday gift of just some advice from me. It was my way of kind of forcing him to give me some advice, which he just was not, it wasn't something he did very often. And so he said, he thought, and he didn't say no, he just thought very quietly and he said, when you act, try more and more to act as an instrument for the Guru. It's not you acting, it's the Guru acting through you. And your words, your actions, everything will have much more power. And this was a very deep truth and it was really, in some ways, it was the, the main feature of his life is that he was a disciple of Yoganandaji and he acted as his instrument. Every time he wrote, he would ask his guru, what do you want me to write? How do you want me to say this? And he said, because he did that throughout his whole life in everything he did, he said by the end of his life, he couldn't tell where his thoughts ended and Yogananda's began or vice versa. It was his consciousness and the gurus were one. By this process, of just trying over the years to be the instrument of God and the Guru and tuning in and listening for them and feeling their power flowing, flowing through them. In this time, it's a very common question because people are having to deal with new situations in these days, being stuck with family or office situations that are different. And it's a common question for me before when people were more going to the office, but it applies to family also. This question comes especially from beginning meditators, but from long-time meditators also. The question is usually some form of this. I meditate, I feel so much peace and openness and harmony and also receptivity, and I go to the office, and you could apply this to family, and there are people there who are angry, irritable, and it starts to really immediately disrupt my equanimity. And I don't know what to do. I just, I had this peace and now I'm losing it and I try to protect it. And, and the answer that Swamiji gave to such situations was again, try to be a cause rather than an effect. Try to be an influence rather than a victim. And the answer here you'll see, and it takes practice, it's a work in progress. We're all a work in progress. Rather than trying to hold on to that peace and protect it, when we do that, we start to be self-involved. We start to be contractive, and our aura and magnetism get weaker. But instead, try to find a way to give, to give the light, to share energy with people, even if it's just praying for people. And you don't have to necessarily say, think to say the right thing and correct the person. It's more about your consciousness. If inwardly you have God's joy and you radiate it out to others, you will find that it makes your own magnetism so strong that you're no longer affected. It's almost like it puts a, a shield around you of radiating energy going out. When I first came to the spiritual path and moved to Ananda village, for some years I practiced an affirmation of Yoganandaji's, which was, I will radiate love and goodwill to others, that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. And I would repeat this over and over again. I will radiate love and goodwill to others, that I may open a channel for God's love to come to all. 
and this got me out of this self-involved worrying about my self state and it got me into giving and sending out energy and serving the guru in this way there was a very interesting story of a of a woman who came to ananda village many years ago she lived in south america and she was she had a work of her own of sharing um, spiritual teachings uh, of god in nature and in other ways that and she was also a disciple of yogananda ji but she was praying to master just her last day i think it was at the ashram of the guru in california and she was praying master how how do i give when i go back and how do i act and what do i do i need to know what i'm supposed to be doing i can't figure it out the details of it and she prayed sincerely and deeply and she was staying in a tent in a field there at ananda village and yogananda ji appeared to her outside of her tent i think her tent was too small for him to appear inside so he had to be outside but he appeared to her outside the tent and he only said one word to her just one word of advice you think that if you were yogananda appeared to you you'd want all kinds of words of wisdom and advice and greedily pulling it from him like i was trying to do with swami kriyananda ji he said one word to her he said give give g i v e one word four letters long but with so much meaning and power and, and impact and she understood what it meant it meant that all she had to think about was giving to others giving light giving joy being that instrument whether worthy or not and that in that process of giving and loving and serving it creates a flow of energy where the divine starts to flow through us changes our consciousness but more importantly also it guides us to do the right thing in everything that we're doing and so don't feel like you need to be perfect or worthy to be an instrument for the light you just need to be willing i think people would be stunned and surprised to find how how imperfect some of us teachers are sharing these teachings but we've understood this so deeply that we don't need to be perfect to share light to share love to share divine blessings and grace we just need to be willing <clears throat> and open god will make us right in the end our part is simply to cooperate with what the divine wants us to do and the more we think of giving and serving the more we get out of ourselves the more magnetic we become the less anxious we come we become and during these days especially do a lot of prayers for others so many of us are doing this more and more just spending a lot of time praying for those who are sick those who are suffering or in grief for dealing with such things in a way this is our duty and we can do it what well, yesterday we had a beautiful day yesterday i was part of two different meetings satsangs work parties online one of them had about 80 people the other one had 30 or 40 and in both of them one of them was a big phone calling campaign for an online event we're doing and the other one was with our home study mentors and teachers and volunteers and graphic designers and technical people and these are a hundred people who are serving the guru throughout india and it's just when you see the people who are serving the guru and giving of themselves without thinking oh i'm unworthy or what about me or what about my problems they give and give and give and they serve the light and they serve the guru and you see so much joy and you see so much freedom in them and so much just lack of self-involvement and worry and let god worry about our problems uh, just uh we don't have to worry about them god will fix them i think god is in charge of them anyways and we think we're in charge and so we get all anxious about our problems and i have to fix it and yeah we have to put out the right kind of energy but when we're in god then then everything starts to work right and everything starts to flow properly so our part is to be in that consciousness of the saint as described in the gita <clears throat> to be in god in meditation in prayer and then to act as an instrument for god now this is something that sri teshwar ji said one of his many statements in the autobiography of a yogi 
And I found it, I've always found it really helpful. It's been a mantra in my life, actually. He said that those who are too good for this world are adorning some other. So long as you breathe the free air of earth, you are under obligation to render grateful service. And so you will see that those who are not free yet, it's not that we even are under obligation. We do. We, we, have, we have a body. We have a, a duty. We've been given this divine form and opportunity. We have a duty to share these things. But you also find that it is the way to freedom, is to share these things. And so this has been a mantra for many years in my life, just that last two words, grateful service. Whenever I feel either tired or, you know, either are unworthy or unwilling, I just, it's something for decades I've repeated in my mind, grateful service, grateful service. And I just feel this joy coming up and gratitude because gratitude really awakens this feeling of joy and just wanting to give more. And so when we're grateful to God, for giving us even little things, even though we're not all the way there yet, then we start to feel this joy rising up. It's so interesting. One of the work things that we did yesterday with this big phone calling, it's also from Autobiography of a Yogi and from Sri Yukteswarji. And he says in that book, it's so interesting, Hiranyaloka is this highest astral plane where Sri Yukteswar lives. And he's he is, he is now too good for this world. He's adorning that world. And he said he's not coming back to this earth. It's an extremely high astral plane where only greatly liberated souls and free souls live. And even there, he said, the residents there of Hiranyalok remain mostly awake in ecstasy, awake and alert. They're not dozing or drifting or just kind of enjoying these beautiful astral songs and music and scenery. They're mostly awake in ecstasy, working out problems in the universe, including the redemption of earthbound souls. So even they are working at it, at what we're doing, making phone calls and helping our friends and being an instrument for the light. And so this is one of the most important truths that we can live at this time. And you'll see as the, the affirmation that we did today, there are two currents in life. And we can never stay still. We try to hold on to our gains and just try to, okay, I've made a lot of progress. I just want to hold on to it for now. But you can't stay still in this world. There are only two currents. There's not a third one of just stuck in no current. You're either going forward or backwards. And so when we start to hold on and try to protect, then we start drifting back towards our comfort zone and just, you know, spiritually going in that current but we need to put out the energy of awake and ready and enthusiasm and wanting to give. Because when we give, whenever we're giving, we're in that current of divinity and grace that's carrying us to God and out of our little self and out of our problems and contractions. This is the way to freedom. I have seen this over the many years of practicing these things and seeing many, many people doing it that when we think of giving, of serving, of loving, those who do that, they grow by far the most quickly and the most rapidly, even when they're, quote, not worthy and extremely imperfect and flawed in many ways. It's just this is the way out, and that's how we become free, is we don't become perfect by just waiting for it to happen or praying for it or just thinking of ourselves and our own freedom. We must share with others, and in that process, we become free because we please God in that way. Swamiji, I'll just close finally, with something that Swamiji, it was very important to him. It was a phrase from one of his books, and he had it on his wall at his office when he lived at the Pune retreat. And it was on a big poster there in his office. So obviously, it held a lot of importance to him. And it said, when you hold the griefs of others up to God's love for his comfort, you will experience joy. And he said, joy will be yours when you hold the griefs of others to God's love for his comfort. And so again, when we get out of ourselves and we have griefs, we have sorrows, we all, we all suffer, we're all dealing with so many things. 
but when we offer the griefs of others up to God's love for his comfort, our brothers and sisters who are suffering and say, Lord, help this person. Mother, bless my brother or sister. They're crying, they're suffering. Please, you know, heal their griefs and heal their wounds and their sickness. Then we experience divine joy because then we are, in a way, behaving like the saints. We are behaving like the masters whose only thought ever is to give, to give up God's light, love, divine bliss to all souls. This is the way to freedom. We don't have to wait to become a master to do that. In fact, that's how they became saints and masters, is by understanding this truth. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti.